Hi guys, this is Ash here and this is part 2 of my uh, comprehensive review of the Samsung Galaxy S3. So, uh, you know, true to its inspired by nature tagline, the Android UA, I mean, uh, the Android TouchWiz UX that uh, Samsung has plastered over, uh, you know, Android 4.0. Uh, you know, right from the time you turn on the phone, you've got a lot of uh, naturistic uh, features like as in when you move around on the lock screen, you can see the water ripple effect and you can hear the water rippling. And uh, every time you tap something, you hear the, what do you say, the uh, water droplet sounds. I've not yet gotten annoyed by it, so it's all pleasant to hear and I like it. Uh, Alright, the first thing, uh, let, let's talk about the lock screen for a bit. Uh, Samsung seems to have taken a page out of HTC's uh, playbook with the with the shortcuts on the top uh, on the lock screen. Uh, you just need to pull and leave it to open up that app, and uh, that is totally customizable. So one thing that uh, I feel Samsung could have done different is, in case you guys, in case we have any kind of a lock set in place, and you still drag your camera. Your camera will not open the phone would ask for the password first before opening the camera but in case of you know uh, sense ui with the htc one x you the camera will open up and you can take a picture but then if you're going to try to go into the gallery it will ask you for a password so you know for people who with privacy concerns who actually use uh you know passwords and so on uh i feel that this kind of a feature might have saved a few uh, extra seconds, I mean a few seconds uh, when trying to get a picture. Uh, it's not a big gripe, but, just, uh, but I just thought I'll let you guys know. Anyway, uh, I will be doing a full comparison between the HTC One X and the Galaxy S3 in a bit, uh, in a few days maximum, so stay subscribed for that guys. Uh, Alright, the first thing you notice once, you're, once you've, uh, uh, you know, got into the phone is that there are five uh, icons in the dock unlike the S2 where you have four. With the increase in the screen size, it makes sense to have five icons there. Uh, and as far as widgets go, we have a separate tab for widgets now. And you can just select the widgets. It doesn't work, you know, like like before where you just tap and select widgets from there. It doesn't work that way anymore. You just uh, go into the apps menu, get uh, go into widgets, select what widget you want, and tap and hold it and you can just drop it into any of the screens I mean, this doesn't work obviously FM radio alright and some widgets are customizable you can just uh, customize the size and so on so that's pretty decent and we have a lot of widgets to play around with by default lots and lots of widgets so again a good selection again guys this uh, this is I mean the Galaxy S3 runs the latest version of uh, uh, Android that is ice cream sandwich 4.0.4 so uh, let me quickly show you that about device that's Android 4.0.4 ice cream sandwich so anyway uh, which means that uh, you have the regular, you know, you can just swipe to uh, close down notification, I mean, uh, to close individual notifications. Press and hold the home screen. Uh, and one more thing, guys, with the uh, latest ice cream sandwich phones, uh, the menu back, um, home and back keys have been replaced uh, with keys like, you know, for the One X, the back, home, and the open apps uh, uh, keys. But uh, Samsung has not gone with that kind of layout. They have still stuck with the menu back and home keys over here uh, so for open uh, the, the recent apps or the open apps you just need to press and hold the home key and you get to it and again as with ICS you can just swipe to close down any apps that you uh, don't want anymore so works fine and you also have a task manager over here which shows you what apps are active so let me quickly open up an app here say for example play store and jump into task manager and it will show you uh, what I mean, how much RAM is being consumed, and uh, what is the CPU usage of the app that's running. So this is this is uh, useful in case you know you are running a lot of intensive apps and so, and you want to switch around. As of today, as of now, uh, I haven't found any apps that actually cause my phone to overheat or uh, stutter or so on. But if in the future there are real intensive apps that come up, then this pro this might be useful. And you also have the downloaded apps over here, so it's easier to uninstall them instead of going into 
uh, settings and navigating into applications trying to find out any I mean what app you don't want and uninstall it this is easy to do and you can also clear your RAM from here uh, your storage details and that's pretty much it uh, and talking about memory management over here guys uh, let me quickly take you to that data management you can also you, with here you can you can say I mean you can check what apps are using up data over here as in uh, how much uh, data is being used in the foreground and what in the background and you can uh, adjust your apps accordingly you can also set your data, data usage cycles and well, how much data uh, what kind of warning you I mean if you require a warning when you reach a certain limit and so on and to stop all data usage after a certain limit it is possible to do that and uh, that's pretty convenient if you if for people on limited data plans uh, one more much hyped feature about the Galaxy S3 is the S is S voice that's pretty much uh, you know like uh, Apple's version I mean Samsung's version of uh, Apple Siri so uh, let me quickly set this up so uh, you just tap on this open camera and there you go camera is open so uh, it's pretty decent uh, no, not great uh, when it comes to uh, voice recognition this voice is also integrated onto the lock screen guys so uh, you know with security and uh, screen lock you can also select face and voice as an option wherein uh, the phone will either try to use face unlock to unlock or, or you can have you can say say specific things so that the phone will recognize your voice and unlock that way so you've got motion uh, face unlock face and voice pattern pin password swipe or none so these are the possible unlock options okay so the most important thing about a phone is the calling function obviously the basic reason why we get a phone and Samsung seems to have nail this you've got the usual smart calling uh, options as smart dial options as in uh, just you know home to get to home or you know just press the numbers and you get to it you also have the contacts uh, integrated over here and uh, you've got your call logs and favorites options the noise reduction on this phone also works uh, very well I've had no problems with dropped calls or the other person not be being able to hear me even when I've been out in crowded places uh, it's still been very clear and it's amazing uh, the next thing you know let's talk about contacts for a bit as far as contacts go goes guys I'm not really impressed over here because you know when compared to HTC and Sense uh, Samsung's contacts app has not really improved a lot uh, you know since with TouchWiz 4 or TouchWiz 5 or even from before that there have been very minimal increments uh, improvements and the uh, I mean Twitter integration has been removed uh, the contact picture still remains small uh, the small low resolution pictures from Google you also have an option of choosing other pictures as far as uh, as far as linking goes it really doesn't work very well not a lot of contacts get linked uh, with their Facebook counterparts uh, and manual linking is a real painful process and especially for people like me who you know root and root the phone and flash custom firmwares and so on uh, every time uh, to go about manually linking contacts is a real pain with competitors like say HTC uh, they seem to have nailed contact integration and linking contacts ever since since 1.0 I guess the desire had amazing contact link uh, contact linking and uh, since 2.0 on the desire HD just improved it uh, and ever since it's been almost perfect so linking contacts is something that I feel uh, the TouchWiz UI, you know, Samsung and TouchWiz actually lack on. But then again, Samsung has some decent features when it comes to contacts. Uh, you can just go ahead. Let me open up a contact over here. Apart from personalized ringtones, you can also have personalized vibration patterns. And patterns now, you've got basic vibrations. You've got heartbeat. A few presets, and you can also create your own vibration patterns, as in. And you can also go ahead and save them and use them again so that's a 
pretty decent feature. Let me quickly get to messaging here. Messaging still remains pretty much unchanged from uh, you know Galaxy S2 and Galaxy Note and Touch with 4.0. Uh, no real change here. With contacts and messaging, you have the regular swipe right to call and swipe left to message. So it's pretty much the same. Uh, as far as the keyboard goes, uh, one thing that I've, I mean, with a 4.8 inch uh, display, uh, I feel that an extra row of four numbers could have been added because with the Galaxy Note has an extra row of four numbers and that's 5.3 inches. Uh, a little bit of uh, area could have been used for numbers, that's my personal opinion. But still, then again, we have the uh, swipe to switch option where you just swipe and you get numbers and you swipe back and get letters, so that more than makes up for it. And the predictive text is also a welcome feature. One thing that uh, TouchWiz has nailed is the notification bar. You know, you've got a lot of uh, options over here, shortcuts. This is a place where I feel, you know, competitors like HTC lack because the One X does not have any quick notifications over here, which means it's a pain having to go into settings every time uh, to get things changed. But these notifications are really, really easy to use. But then again, a little gripe over here is that every time you pull it up, it moves. So if you want to just turn on something you got to pull it down and wait a second for it to move and then use it not a big problem but just a personal uh, gripe from my my end i guess uh okay let's quickly move on to internet over here the browser is very is very fast and it's pretty good uh allows you to open up to eight tabs on a quad core processor i was kind of hoping for more but then again uh you're not really going to be using uh eight tabs anyway and as you saw, there, there can be the occasional uh, crash. It's not really that common enough for me to call it a gripe, but it does tend to happen once in a while. Uh, all right, so let me quickly load up any webs. I mean, uh, ESP and Quick Info over here. All right, so uh, over here, you also have the options to you know risk, uh, request a desktop, uh, desktop view of the site. You just tap it and any website that you open goes directly to the web i mean the uh desktop uh, version of the site and not the mobile version and uh let me quickly open up any article so the te text reflow works pretty well as well so you just double tap and the text reflows to fit the screen uh but then again if you zoom in any further the text does not reflow uh you need to actually move around to check it out uh, whereas you know phones like HTC as uh, one X still uh, let the text reflow beyond this point so that is I mean it is not some there's not a feature that you will be missing but I just wanted to let you guys know anyway uh, you again you also have the options to uh, save for offline view offline reading uh, you can also adjust the brightness or brightness settings over here take it change, increase it or decrease it just for the browser so that you don't uh, you can have a certain brightness set for the phone but for the browser alone you can have you know you've got different all preset options low power saving medium power saving high power saving and so on so uh, that's another welcome addition uh, again you also have an incognito mode over here uh, right here you just tap on it and you go into uh, incognito mode just like uh, Chrome's incognito mode for the desktop uh, again since this is Android 4.0 you can uh, very well download Chrome Chrome Beta and that will help you uh, sync all your bookmarks and so on from your desktop right onto Ooh. Galaxy S3's Chrome. And uh, this is not a default app, you need to get it off the Play Store. Alright guys, talking about apps, let me quickly do give you a rundown on what apps are present for this phone, you know. Starting with, we've got the FM radio. The FM radio requires a headset to be plugged in uh, to be used. And uh, you can also re record any channels that you're listening to. Uh, it cannot be turned on without your phone, so that's pretty much par for the course. Uh, as far as email goes, you've got uh, Samsung's email client, and you also have Gmail. Uh, you also have the voice recorder. Uh, the voice recorder. Uh, as far as S apps go, you've got S Memo, uh, S Voice, S Memo, S Planner, and S Suggest. S Suggest suggests you. Uh, you know, uh, apps and so on. The Samsung App Store, in my opinion, you know, does not measure up. Does not. It's a, It doesn't have a great list of apps, and uh, uh, it's a, it's too cluttered for me to actually use it. And uh, for the S Memo, there is a uh, accessory called the C Pen. You know, that'll actually 
it kind of works like the star, the, like the S Pen for the Galaxy Note. So uh, once you get the accessory, S Memo would be really useful. But till then, it's just a normal Memo app. Uh, and you have, you've got the regular Video Hub. Uh, music hub and reader hub and then you've got the maps app the maps app is pretty decent you know par for the course again and with gps and glonass you get uh, extremely quick fixes about three seconds when you're in a outside area and uh, near a window or on the you know or when you're traveling a maximum of 10 seconds to get a fix it's pretty effective uh, again guys the alarm application has been uh, worked on a little bit so uh, you know let me quickly show you you've got options here uh, for alarm types you get a, an option called briefing over here the alarm actually reads out the alarm time schedule weather information news headlines and so on because so there's a pretty decent option and again you've got an option for a smart alarm the sun, over here you know the sound starts quietly and then increases so it's it's nice to see that Samsung has put in a lot of effort into small things like the alarm clock and so okay, on. Another glaring omission over here is uh, Keys Air. I don't know if many of you have used it uh, since I've been using a Galaxy Note. Uh, there's this app called Keys Air, uh, which which lets you actually access the files on your phone from a web browser. Uh, this app is missing missing with the Galaxy S3. It was pretty slow to begin with, but it was a nice fun addition to the phone and I just wanted to let you guys know that it's actually missing okay one more thing over here guys finally with this version of TouchWiz we get the option uh, to actually alphabetically sort uh, the, the apps that is one of the most annoying features of TouchWiz uh, for me till the Galaxy Note uh, the inability to uh, you know to by default sort the apps in alphabetical order uh, prior to uh, touch with UX that is the touch with for Galaxy S3 we only had two options a customizable grid and an alphabetical list to scroll down using a list is a it's actually a pain uh, and uh, to have a customizable grid me means to actually have to customize your apps over here and again move on to the home screen and customize them again uh, if you really I mean if you've used a, a touch with based phone in the past you guys will be understanding what I'm trying to say here. It's a welcome addition that we can alphabetically sort apps over here. So that's pretty much it guys for part 2 of the review of the Galaxy S3. If you guys want to order this phone, you can click on the links in the description that will take you directly to Amazon and you can place an order there. Um, and uh, if you guys want to order any accessories for the Galaxy S3, you can use the link in the description as well. Uh, if you guys have any comments or feedback for me, uh, you can leave it in the comment section or hit me up on Facebook or Twitter or email me again. My contact details are in the description. Uh, so is the link to the next part of this review. Uh, uh, it's in the description or I have it on the annotated onto the video right now as well. So make sure you click on it and you move on to the next part of this video. And before you do that, make sure you like and subscribe guys. I will be coming out with more videos for the Galaxy S3. Uh, the Node and HTC One X as well, including comparisons, benchmarks, scam tests, and so on. Uh, so that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you in the next part. You guys have a great day. It's Ashwin signing off. Bye bye.